Alright everyone, hope you're well. So, as you may be able to tell, we are going to be making some strawberry wine. Now this is going to be the best strawberry wine I have ever made. And uh, to be fair, last year's strawberry wine, uh, rhyme? Strawberry wine kind of set the bar pretty high. Uh, it was the first time we did the on the pulp fermentation. And even though we still use the same amount of strawberries as we did in the previous version, which was a steeped version of the strawberry wine, the, the one that brewed on the pulp was so much nicer. I mean, it had a better color, it had more flavor, it had more strawberry appeal. Strawberries are sexy. They are, you know it. So we're gonna be making a much better version of this wine. Now, in order to do that, we could try and make it taste like a wine, but no, that's, that's just not gonna happen. I like my wines to taste like the fruit. So in order to get a much better flavor, and a deeper, darker red color. I went and picked up another two kilos of strawberries. That brings the total to four kilos of strawberries for a one gallon batch. That's pretty high. We only need two and it gives you a really good flavor, but decadence, let's just make some really nice tasting wine. So uh, let's, let's just do it. Yeah. So we're going to need a couple of things to make this wine work. Now this is a quick drinking wine. It is ready to drink in four weeks or basically as soon as it clears. Uh, that's a good rule of thumb. It will clear. Now I am going to be using pectolase. It is an enzyme that breaks down pectin. So you don't get wine haze. This wine is going to be clear and pretty and nice and all things holy with strawberries. Because uh, like you know, strawberries are pretty damn sexy. So I want it to look good in the bottle, make it a sexy bottle of wine. Now we are going to need some yeast nutrient, even though strawberries can ferment itself. They are a superfood. So they are one of the few things that kind of brews pretty well without any nutrient whatsoever. But I am going to add it because I do want this to be nice and dry. Take the risk if you want, but I, I don't need to. It's not going to harm adding it in. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I've gone ahead and I've sterilized my worktop my hands because uh, I was sterilizing everything. I've also got a five gallon brew bucket. This is because all of my other containers are well in use. So I'm going to use a five gallon one. It does have a lot more air room in here, but that won't matter because once it starts brewing, it will push all this, the air out and, you know, give it a little bit of extra oxygenation, I suppose. So first things first, let us uh, open up all of these bags of strawberries. Save some time. So all of our strawberries have been opened. They're ready to go. Now the great thing about these frozen strawberries is, well, Frozen strawberries are usually riper strawberries from the get-go, so they've got a lot more flavor than the standard ones. If you buy fresh strawberries, you kind of have to let them mature a little bit, you know, get a bit squishy, and then freeze them and then unfreeze them. It's another step. It's already done. They've been topped, and, well, it's all been done for you. So I've got my 25-liter container. Now, I told a little bit of that can't speak. I told a little bit of a lie. We're not making a one gallon batch because, you know, I make five liter batches. We're actually going to be making a six liter batch. This is to try and compensate for, uh, well, the extra strawberries because we want to get our six bottles and there are going to be some leftover stuff that I'm going to be using for another video for Patreon because, you know, I'm cool like that. Waste not, want not. So first step, let's chuck them all in the barrel. Ah, it smells fresh, but not bleachy because I use bleach to sterilize. Use whatever one you want. I like bleach. It's never failed me yet. So in they go. So all the strawberries have been added into the bucket and 
the whole frozen strawberries, they come up to about the six liter mark. Now these are frozen, we could wait for them to thaw out, but uh, uh, that takes forever. Plus the outsides of the strawberries probably have wild yeast and God knows what on them. So I've boiled the kettle and I have two liters of boiling water freshly done. And I'm just gonna dump it on. One, it thaws it out and two, it scorches the outside to kill off anything we don't want in there. So uh, something tells me I'm gonna need a double dose of this. So I'm gonna boil the kettle with another two liters of water. So in goes the other two liters. Oh, that smells good. So I'm <laughs> just gonna give it a little swirl with my, uh, with the bucket. And already it's taking on that lovely red color. Even before mashing, this is actually, the water is about as red as the original steeped version of the wine as it came out. So uh, we're looking at good things. Pretty cool. So after giving it a swirl for about 30 seconds, uh, this is evened out now. It's actually cold, not cold, but not boiling to the touch anymore. Now, usually I'd use a stick blender. It makes it a lot finer, but uh, I didn't buy one the other day. I forgot again. It's just not high on my list when I have the natural blender. So my hands have been sterilized and I've only touched the packages and washed my hands again. So I'm going to crush by hand. It works. Why not? So, uh, yeah, these strawberries are pretty <laughs> minus those strawberries. Uh, these are actually squidging up pretty damn easily. Ooh, right. I'm gonna take a minute with this, so uh, see you in a minute. So I've been squishing away for about five minutes and I've pretty much got it all. Unfortunately, because of the amount of strawberries, this water is almost ice cold. Uh, some of the middles of the strawberries are still a little bit frozen. But either way, this is far too cold to pitch any yeast or pretty much do anything with it. We could leave it alone, but uh, why do that? So I've got my last remaining two liters of boiling water. And uh, hopefully this will warm this up a bit, thaw the last bits out. So you may be wondering, because uh, we're making a six liter batch, yet we're almost up to the 10 liter mark. Uh, that's because of all the extra strawberry pulp. And there is some juices uh, that are coming out here as well. So you can't really rely on uh, measurements on this. You kind of just have to guess using the uh, water that you're adding. You end up with a little bit extra, but eh, extra is good. Either way, we should be almost there. So I'm gonna give it a swirl. And funny enough, that does not feel ice cold anymore. So uh, yeah, it's good. So I'm gonna continue squishing the last remaining bits of strawberry. Oh, that's pleasant. It's like a tepid bath. Mm. So after another 10 minutes of uh, crushing by hand, we've actually got something that kind of looks like it could be blended as close as we're going to get anyway. So because we use four kilos of strawberries, the content of sugar is something that you should start accounting for. Normally when you're using a couple of kilos just to basically flavor your wines, there's not really enough sugar. So I sat down and worked out how much four kilos of strawberries had in the way of sugar. And it is about 500 grams, which is 5%. Very nice in a gallon batch. So we're gonna be adding sugar because I don't wanna drink 5% wine. I don't. So I've got the classic white sugar. It is a one kilo bag. It's pre-measured and we know from previous experience that 11% comes from about a kilo of sugar. It's already got 5% in here, so it should be somewhere around the 15% because we're making slightly more than a gallon batch. So in it goes. Oh yes. There 
we go. So we've added in our sugar. We're going to have to mix that in. But we also need to add pectolase because I want this to be nice and clear. So uh, I've got my pectolase. Lovely, lovely. Uh, that's basically empty. So I got myself a new one. <laughs> this one is Vin Class. It's pectolase. It's all the same. Now, because I am using more fruit than I normally am, than I normally would, I'm going to be adding in twice the amount of pectolase. Doesn't harm if you add in a little bit extra. Doesn't matter. So uh, here we go. It doesn't affect the wine in any way, shape, or form. So in goes a second heaped teaspoon. You can be as accurate as you like, but that, that, that does for me. So it says one level teaspoon. Ish. That's how we like it. So since I've already been using my hands, uh, I'm going to mix in the sugar with my hands as well. Because, um, yeah, your hands are the best way to tell if the sugar is dissolved. I seem to be spending a lot of time with my hand in this wine. Oh yeah. It's gritty. You know what I forgot to add in? Yeah. Well, I've, I've got, I forgot to add in the yeast nutrient. It's not needed, but I want it, so I'm going to use it. But I have to do it one-handed. Lame. So in goes roughly one teaspoon's worth of yeast nutrient. Doesn't matter if you add a little bit more in or if it's a heap teaspoon. It's, yeah. The yeast, it's going to use the nutrient, so it's all good. Back to mixing. Right, I would say that's pretty well mixed and uh, I have a lovely, I guess, sweet hand. There's only one way to find out. Oh, that tastes good. Mm. I'm just gonna lick my arm for a minute. Mm. So at this point, we have got the strawberries mashed, the sugars in, the pectolase, and the nutrient is all good to go. So I've got my hydrometer. It has been sterilized and just keep it in fresh water because it stands up. Makes it a lot easier. I've also got the container it came in because, you know, cheap like that. And I'm just going to draw off some of the liquid to take a decent hydrometer reading. Hopefully we shouldn't get many bits in here if I do it slowly. Right, uh, this is just going to take a minute to settle out, so uh, see you in a minute. So I've given the hydrometer a few minutes to uh, sort itself out. You can't rush a hydrometer. So, amusingly, we have got a different reading than what I was expecting. Because when we took the actual fruit in here into account and we were expecting it to produce somewhere around 500 uh, grams of sugar, so about 5% into the initial gravity. I did factor that slightly in by adding an extra liter into the equation. Cause well, the juice, you, yeah, you don't really count the juice. But for some reason, this is actually showing up at 10% on the hydrometer, which is a little confusing. Now, either the sugars are still trapped inside the strawberries or um, there probably wasn't that much sugar in them. Who'd have known? Live and learn, I guess. We're just gonna have to see how it tastes when it finishes. Uh, finishes. But still, 10% is okay. We could adjust it a bit more with a bit of extra sugar, but I'm gonna play it safe and just leave it as it is. 10%'s okay. So that brings our reading out to 1.06, eh, four on the hydrometer. Now that's if it ferments to dryness, which is down there at 990. So uh, we shall see what happens. So we don't need our hydrometer anymore. Out you come. Look at that pretty nice looking tea. Even though this is freshly made, it's pretty strawberry colored. And it should only get darker. So uh, I'm not gonna put that in there. So the last step that we're going to need to do is add in our yeast. Now we're not doing anything fancy because it's a fruit wine. We don't need to add like a burgundy uh, wine yeast. It helps make a fuller bodied wine. 
We're trying to make a wine that tastes like a strawberry, not a wine that tastes like a wine with hints of strawberry. So I'm going to be using my universal wine yeast. It works for every occasion. So uh, all you need is a tiny little sprinkle, just on the top, don't need to go nuts. And that is pretty much done. Pop the lid on, close it on pretty much all sides, apart from one where you just leave it slightly ajar so the gas can escape and no bugs can get in. And that's, yeah, we're done. We're just gonna put this to one side and leave it for a month. And we'll come back and we'll see what's happened. Hopefully we're gonna have the best strawberry wine ever. That's the idea. So uh, I guess the only way to find out is to join me for the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and subscribe, like, share, you know, do all that stuff that people tell you that, you know, do YouTube videos. And uh, carry on humbering, guys. See you later.